glad you're here. And it is amazing. I've had this uh, <clears throat> sermon in mind. It's called Eternal Things, just for you. Brother Chad, uh, I've had this sermon in mind for over a week. And that last song that we sang, almost, it's like... It was crazy. I'm looking at that, and I'm going, man, it's just like it read my sermon notes. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's go to Matthew 6.25. I'm going to ask you all to do two things for me. Uh, lend me your ear for a little bit. Just ignore everything else. And then I want you to use your imagination. You'll see why in just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and do my illustration first. Part of it, anyway. All right, let's see what we got here. Let's see Got something over here. Okay, I want you to imagine this rope here representing eternity. Now, we know the rope's not eternal, but I want you to think about this. This rope is representing eternity, okay? Just think about that for a while and... Think about that rope going on and on and on. And uh, we know we as Christians have eternal life. Uh, once we're saved, it's a done deal. There we go. And just think about that rope going on and 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 on. Matthew 6, 25 <clears throat> says, Therefore I say unto you, and... Let's, let's just let's just go ahead and pray first, okay? Lord God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for this word. We thank you, Lord, for the songs. We ask, Lord, that you would just uh, keep us attentive, watch over us. And, Lord, uh, any of those that are listening online, we pray, Lord, that uh, they would get something out of this. And uh, this message is mainly for Christians, but, Lord, we pray for those people that are not saved. We pray for their salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink. Now, we know that the Lord wants us to take thought for, you know, we're going to live, we're going to raise our kids, and we're going to do that. But what he's saying is just the rudimentary stuff. What are you worried about bread for? What are you worried about drink for? God takes care of the sparrows, right? God takes care of, I mean, if you go to Texas, I went to Texas here a while back, work on a car wash, <clears throat> and uh, there were so many birds. Uh, maybe D knows what kind of birds they are. They're blackbirds, some kind of blackbirds. They were, every power line was full, like this with birds. The whole block wall of Walmart was birds solid birds just there were birds on the cars out in the parking lot there were birds in the parking lot I, I, I couldn't I said man that's a lot of birds God feeds every one of them isn't that crazy I'm sorry D it's taking away your insects from you but Therefore, I say unto you, he says, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink. Matthew chapter 10, verse 39. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. My whole point here is I'm wanting you to think about eternity. I'm wanting you to think about, I don't even want to use the word millions because millions is nothing. A million seconds is about 11 and a half days. A billion seconds is like 32.7 years. A trillion seconds is like 3,200 and some odd years. So that's the difference between a million, billion, and a trillion. It's like crazy. And eternity is way farther than that. Okay, so think about this thing going all the way, however far it goes. We can't even understand how far it is. He that findeth his life shall lose it. 
you're down here, you've got, you've got a job, you've got a nice job, you've got a bad job, whatever, you work so long and uh, you want to retire for a few years and then, you're, then you die. What, what good does that do you if you don't fulfill God's purpose for your life and for my life? You've heard, you've heard the saying, you know, uh, you've only got one life, one life to live to a soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. And that's true. And the, the whole point is I'm, what I'm trying to make for we as Christians is let's get an eternal look at things. Let's look at the big picture that we can't even fathom how big it is. In Matthew 16, 25, it says, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Mark 8, 35, it says almost the same thing as Matthew 16, 25, but God adds just a little bit else to it. And the Gospels. Shall lose his safe, shall lose his life for my sake, and the gospels. What did Jesus Christ come to earth for? It was the gospel. It was our salvation. It was for for his creatures to be saved. And what is our purpose in life here? Now, what brought this on was, is I I, I can't call him a friend, but he was a, a good acquaintance of that that I. You know, the, the, his name was Richard. He's the one that passed away a couple of weeks ago. And we cannot find any of his family at all to let him know that he passed away. Well, I mean, every time I had a chance, I talked to him. He's, I'm one of the only people who would talk to him, uh, basically because of our military background. He was Navy. I was Marines. And we would tease each other back and forth, you know. Oh, you were in the, you were in the uh, Department of the Navy. I'd say, yeah, I was in the men's department. Of course, he'd laugh about that, you know. That, you know, just a, you know, a, a little thing to break the ice. And God gave me, man, He gave me about an hour one day, and I mean, I, I got to tell him the gospel and answer questions. And I'm talking about straight up, man to man, not not any, not any wishy washy stuff. I'm talking about straight up. Okay, you're going to die and you're going to go straight to hell. You know, I've. I've I've been able to do that to several people in my life, my dad being one, and I think my dad is in hell. Uh, he wanted to party with his friends. Uh, this, this guy was basically the same way. He was about 10 years younger than me, I believe. But uh, he was a good guy, just a good person, but just did not want to receive the gospel. I've got another gentleman that I've been witnessing to. He's 86 years old. And he thinks that his good works are going to, if it's good, here's basically, here's what he told me, period. I'm good to people. I don't cheat people. I don't lie to people. And if that's not good enough for, to get me, uh, he, he, he doesn't actually use the word heaven or to get me by or whatever. Uh, he goes, then I guess it, it is what it is. I said, no, man, it's not it is what it is. You're going to die and you're going to go to hell and you're going to burn. You're going to burn in hell. There's lots of good people in, in hell, lots of good people in hell. Yeah. The point is you have to be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. You have to trust him as your Savior. You have to realize you're a sinner. Yeah. In fact, I was saying, uh, well, you've sinned. And he goes, oh, you know, and this, that, and the other. And he used the Lord's name in vain. And I said, you just sinned, dude. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. He will not hold thee guiltless by taking his name in vain. I said, that's, that's a commandment. There's, you know, Ten Commandments, right? I said, you just, and I said, and I'm sure you've told a lie, or, you know, thou shalt not bear false witness. I'm sure you've told a lie. Well, you know, I said, well, that's two commandments. I said, you're guilty. And if you're guilty, you have to be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. I, I try to be as nice as I can, but, I, but I, I'm straightforward. I want, to be, I want to be straight up with people because... I could name several other people that just would not trust the Lord. The old, and most of them were older. They, they were just good people, and they didn't hurt anybody, you know. 
So the gospel is the point. That's the reason that we are here on this earth. It's not to make a lot of money. You know, if, if, if God blesses you with a lot of money, more power to you. Use it for the glory of the Lord. Just because you have a lot of money doesn't mean you're evil and wicked, <laughs> okay? And just because you're poor doesn't mean you're righteous. And, and uh, you know, It's just not the way it is. We're to find out what God wants us to do in our lives, and then we are to do that, what that is. Uh, Brother, Chad's had, Brother Chad has an opportunity down there to witness to. I'll, never, I'll probably never see the people he sees. And he won't see the people I see. God's got us all in a certain place to do a certain thing. And we need to be about that. We need to be about that business. 1 Corinthians 9.27, go there. Thinking about eternity? The Bible says... Here's what Paul said in verse 27. But I keep under my body and bring it unto subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Let me ask you a question as a Christian. Have you ever, have you, have you ever cursed in front of someone that was lost you were trying to witness to? Have you ever drank something you shouldn't have drank? Just because you have liberty to do it, you're not supposed to use your liberty as a cloak of maliciousness, the Bible says. Have you ever just shown yourself off with your anger, your attitude, in front of someone that is looking at you as a testimony? And you're a Christian, and you want to witness to them, and you want to behave like the world? Shame on you. Just plain shame on you. Shame on me. Because that person, is gonna, he's going he's gonna to come to the end of his life, and you, none of us know when that is. I'm living on borrowed time. I'm three score and ten plus one. God promises three, three score and ten. And if your days, by reason of strength, if your days are longer, hey, I'm living on, I like to call it blessed time. That person you're trying to witness to or that you need to be witnessing to, if you're not, you need to bring under your body that I keep under my body. Just keep your temper to yourself. Keep your drinking your beer or drinking your wine in front of other people. Keep it to yourself because they will use that as an excuse to die and go to hell. You understand? Just stop it. Luke chapter 8. Verse 14. And that which fell among thorns are they, which when they have heard, go forth and are choked with the cares and riches of pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. Now, God is not unrighteous in believing that all of us are going to bring forth 100%, some 100, some 60, some 30. But let's just say you're one of the 30% ones. Bring 30%. Okay? Bring 30%. Do what you can do and do it with all your life. Luke chapter 12. The point I'm trying to make here, verse 23, the point I'm trying to make is that we need to pay attention on the spiritual side, what's going to happen in eternity. We've got these few little years down here, and uh, we need to use them efficiently. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Is that all we're worried about? I'm going to go ahead, and uh, you see this rope, right? Are we, are we thinking it's eternal yet? Goes off into eternity. Eternity's over there. You see this part right here? That's the width of my hand here. That's how many, that's how long you live in eternity. So you're going to spend 
this much time growing up. What's half, what's half of 70? It's 35. Our daughter passed away when she was two weeks shy of 34. She was young. Right there. So you're, what you're going to do is you're going to spend this much time right here. You're going to spend this much time from here to here working yourself to the bone so that you can spend this much time in retirement. And then whenever this time is, you pass away, and then it's eternity. What you do right here in this little span of time is going to determine what you do for zillions and zillions and zillions of years in eternity, that little time. So are we just going to waste that little amount of time right there for things of this earth? Or are we going to apply ourselves to the things of God? Do you see that? That little bitty old thing. Look at, look at that. And that's not even eternity. And it looks like it. I mean, you see that? Look how long that is. And you got this much. This much. So what I'm trying to say to us as Christians, myself included, to we as Christians, James 4.14, it says our life is but a vapor, a vapor, and then just, I wish I had just, I've got this video on my phone of I was punching holes in a half-inch metal the other day on my iron worker, and when it punched it, because I have, I have some oil on it, when it punched it, there was this little vapor, this little vapor of oil that came out from under there. It was really cool looking. It just, poof, because the heat generated and the pressure generated, and it popped that. It was a half-inch thick piece of steel, and it popped that like five-eighths inch hole in there, just bam, and this little vapor just went out and left. You know what I'm saying? And that's what our lives are. It was a vapor. I want to go to Psalm 90. We're almost finished. Psalm 90. Verse 12. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Teach us to number our days. And then in Psalm 39. Verse 4, Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is that I may know how frail I am. How frail I am. Yes. Yes, yes. How frail I am. My uh, middle daughter, she was uh, born three months premature, one pound, 14 ounces. She was frail. She was really frail. She didn't have a sucking reflex. We like to never broke her, <laughs> sucking her thumb. <laughs> Sorry, Margie. That's her right over there. She's now full grown, healthy, and got three kids. One pound, 14 and a half ounces. That's frail. But the Lord saw her through it. 1 John 2.17. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Man, can you... Look, this is now... That's forever. This is now. It's like nothing. Do you understand? It's a vapor. It's like nothing. And let this, for our last verse, let's go to uh, Psalm again. Psalm 102. Verse 11. My days are like a shadow that declineth. 
and I am withered like grass. Me and Joey and Connor were talking earlier about, you know, how many miles we run and all that kind of stuff. I used to run a lot of miles in the Marines. Can't do it again. Can't do it now. Used to run 10 miles three times a week with full combat gear on, combat boots, all, you know, 10 and a half pound rifle of port arms. Yep. Not anymore. <laughs> Not happening. You see, just what he says there. Verse 11, my days are like a shadow that declineth, and I am withered like grass. Now listen, this whole, the whole point is every person that you talk to is going to live this long. But somewhere in eternity, they're going to live that long. And it may be very well the words that you speak to them will give them eternal life instead of eternal damnation. Right. All right, let's stand and we'll be dismissed. Lord God, we thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord, for the, your word. We ask, Lord, if there's someone here that's not saved, we pray for their salvation. And, Lord God, we thank you for the ones that are watching. We pray, Lord God, that uh, everything that's said and done in our lives will be to the furtherance of the gospel. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.